Welcome to the Lock In Show. My name is Conan Wienichon and this is episode three of the podcast about the way we live now. Later in the show, we'll be talking to Jonathan Thomas from Indiana in the United States. But first, we're joined by Eileen Gallagher from INEX, the Internet Neutral Exchange Association of Ireland. Eileen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Con. It's good to have you. Uh, and I've got to promise uh, the listeners that we will start having ordinary people on as well, not just people who work inside the internet. But it is interesting and it is kind of important because the way we're living now with our lock-in or lockdown or our uh, social distancing or self-isolation, it really does involve uh, an element of making sure that uh, we rely on technology. So it's people like yourself, Eileen, and the people at INEX, as it's called, the uh, uh, the Internet Neutral Exchange Association of Ireland. Uh, Black Knight, ourselves, the uh, web hosting company and uh, and uh, service provider, we're seeing an increase in traffic. Everyone involved in the heavy lifting end of the internet is definitely, would you agree, Eileen, seeing an increase? Absolutely. I, I think the dynamic of, of the traffic has changed as well. Obviously, we would have seen a lot of traffic coming from um, members that would be serving offices. So all of that mm. traffic is now coming from those with um, home connections. Uh, so that's that's a massive change. Also, we had children that were being entertained by teachers in schools who are now <laughs> um, being educated <laughs> in inverted commas at home by by parents. So mm. um, that, that has definitely changed um, that we would see from our side. But I, I think Pretty much anyone can see that really in their own lives, um, mm. that everything has changed in the way that we're, we're consuming and consuming how, the Internet. How is it for you, Aline, personally? How, how, what, uh, what has changed for you? Well, I work from home anyway, um, okay. and one would think that this was a fairly easy transition, but it is, um, it's it's quite different um, for me. It's its quite different in that the, the normal, like everyone else, the normal rhythm of the day has changed. Um, I now at times I'm working with a six ring circus going on with three children trying to um, kill each other, um, video calls instead of meeting people. Um, and uh, also, you know, just the basic things of, of going out and doing mm. what I do. A lot of the time I would go and work in cafes or something like that, especially if I'm doing any creative writing, I, I need noise around me. So I tend to go out there and obviously we, we would have had a lot of interaction with the operations team. And um, I haven't seen them, I think, in five, six weeks at this stage. So uh, uh, withdrawal symptoms, I think, at this stage. But it is different. But, mm. you know, we can't underestimate the, the stress as well that everybody is under and that has changed some of the interaction that we're having. Now, a lot of internet engineering, um, Eileen, involves being prepared for contingencies. And you guys did prepare for this. And, and at Black Knight, we've had c- contact with you and known that you have been putting preparations in place. Uh, first of all, what kind of preparations did INEX put in place? Well, back in early February, um, which seems like 100 years ago now, we uh, first began the planning phase um, for dealing with COVID-19. We had looked at that stage that was in the early weeks, I suppose, of the um, the impact in Italy. Um, so we put together a crisis plan at that stage um, to look at how we could mitigate any of the possible outcomes um, from COVID-19 uh, when it arrived in Ireland. Um, and really sort if at that stage, I suppose, went to the extremes. And at this stage, we now realize that all of those came true fairly easily. And, you know, um, uh, you know, in terms of people working from home, in terms of restricted access to um, places that we may need to get to, um, uh, but also just the dynamic of where the traffic might be coming and where it might be pulled from. So we put together that proposal, um, which was shared with the INEX board, um, very supportive of all the work that was being undertaken. And then we just took the necessary steps after that. So that that was a mix of us doing what we needed to do on our side to be ahead of member requirements. Mm. And then on the other side, looking back at what had happened during Storm Ophelia um, and the Beast in the East storms and what had happened in yeah. terms of traffic and extrapolating where our traffic was at that stage for members and then looking at what might happen for members. And then we went out to the members that we would have seen in the top 20% of you know where they were nearing capacity um, and said to them, we think you're going to reach capacity. What would you like us to do? Um, and we worked with them. In most cases, that traf- that extra capacity has been put in already. And in some cases, we're, we're still working on that. One of the key elements for us was that we needed to make sure that as a, um, a team that we were... Um, 
protected, I suppose, in a way from mm. interacting with each other um, in case that there would be um, one member of the team would get ill and infect the others. Um, so uh, quite a number of weeks ago now, the team basically split apart and everyone works remotely. We're very lucky at INEX in that the organization and the operations side of it has been set up to be operated almost entirely remotely. One of the things that we couldn't do remotely was um, set up ports uh, when they were required. So what we actually did, um, Nick Hilliard led this as the CTO, uh, was went out to our data centers and pre-provisioned a number of ports at all different speeds. And mm. then we had those that we could bring them up remotely. So all of those little things together put us in a position where, you know, when we now have upgrade requests from members, we don't necessarily need to go out to data centers, which is good because it protects the team. Mm. The team are operating entirely remotely um, and that's all working well and um, we've we've had nothing that has concerned us thus far um, you know member capacity has gone up member traffic has gone up somewhere between 20 and 30 to percent depending on the day um, INEX went through the um, 500 uh, gigabits milestone last week um, and that was largely organic traffic that wasn't any peak event um, so yeah. that was that was interesting to see so that's half a terabit per second of traffic going over the exchange I'm just realising Eileen as I talk to you that the first question I should have asked you is what is INEX for people who wouldn't necessarily uh, be aware and when you talk about members who are you talking about INEX is a, a peering exchange can you explain what that is so we're inex is an internet neutral uh, neutral internet exchange um we're set up in 1996 and owned entirely by the members um as i said it's a not-for-profit organization uh, which means we're obliged not to make a profit mm-hmm. um, and we're there really to facilitate the movement of traffic from one network to another. So the likes of Black Knight, at some stage, the websites that you host for your customers, um, if I'm here in my house, I need to access one of your customers' websites to um, watch a video or pull down an order or whatever it might be. Um, At some stage, my request through to that website has to pass from my ISPs, my internet service providers network through to Black Knights. Um, And that point at which that happens might be INEX. It's it's very likely that it would be INEX. We exist really to just enable the flow. We don't direct any internet traffic. We're just there as a almost like a big roundabout where traffic can move from one network to another smoothly. smoothly. We're there to remove any grit in the internet and and ensure that there is no um, holdups of traffic. But Mm -hmm. the biggest thing for us is that we're we're neutral um, and we exist to make everything work better. Well, keep up the good work, Eileen. Thanks for talking to us uh, on the podcast today. Uh, As I've said when I started this series, uh, Eileen, I hope the series won't last for very long and we won't be in the lock-in or the lockdown. But it's good to see you and uh, thanks for talking to us today. Absolutely. And hopefully, Con, I was uh, remembering today that... uh the last time we had actually, you'd interviewed me was um, when we had a party with about 1,500 people in the middle of Dublin City. Um, and that was much better fun. Um, was, yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll get back to that again. It was. So thanks very much. Thanks, Eileen. All the best. So that's Eileen Gallagher uh, from INEX, the uh, Internet Neutral Exchange of Ireland. And uh, as we said, uh, we'll be bringing you more interviews for people related to the Internet, but also uh, ordinary people and people doing other interesting things in relation to the way we live now. Jonathan Thomas, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Khan. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I said I'd better have you on uh, again. Uh, we got interrupted by dogs the last time, and that's what happens when you're working from home. You and I, Jonathan, I should explain explain our uh, work colleagues. We both work for Black Knight, even though we're 3000 miles apart. And it's one of the remote working things that uh, is possible that many people have been doing and uh, more people are forced to do in the current uh, climate. Um, So I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, Jonathan, to be a regular guest on the show to come back because you've got this perspective. Um, Tell us, first of all, where you live and what things are like there at the moment. Uh, I live uh, in LaPorte, Indiana, which is a small town about an hour outside of Chicago um, we're we're not in Illinois where Chicago is we're mm. there but we consider Chicago to be where we're from just because we're so close yeah. and um, I live in, in basically in the middle of nowhere yeah. um, I live between two small towns and so there's as a remote worker I'm always remote mm. uh, there's no being stuck here is weird because I'm always mm. here anyway because I've I've worked remotely for years, yeah. And um, it's just 
some, some a few things have some, been some different. things aren't that different and I should clarify for listeners as well uh, that I, I work for Black Knight also uh, and I work remotely uh, Black Knight head office is in Carlo uh, here in Ireland uh, but my office is in my house which is in County Clare uh, which is a good uh, distance away from Carlo it's a good two and a half hours drive from, from the headquarters so again I'm used to working remotely and it's just been interesting to watch how this has unfolded Jonathan and I, I recall I think the shock day for many people here in Ireland was the day that it was announced that the schools were going to close. That was on the eve, uh, the Thursday before uh, Friday 13th of March. And if I recall correctly, we were talking, everyone in the team, I was talking to yourself as well. Uh, schools in Indiana closed shortly after that as well, didn't they? Yeah, talking to my wife, I believe our schools decided to close the same day as yours did. Okay. Um, the, the local the local state government um, at the state level decided mm-hmm. to to close the schools and then our, it was up to the local school systems to decide when they wanted to close and for how long and so they decided to close um, through our spring break midterm break mm-hmm. which is actually this week but then they have now extended it they, they extended it to May 1st and then on Friday they announced that they're, they, they're not going back to school this school year yeah. so we they're done with school they're going to continue to do uh, e-learning and mm-hmm. distance learning you know whatever that's, they can that's do that's actually but. more clarity now than we have in this country at the moment Jonathan I, I don't think anything has been uh, announced as regards uh, a return date but I'm not sure that anyone expects that uh, schools will be returning in Ireland this side of the summer holidays what other restrictions are in place uh, where you are well um the problem with the 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 way America runs things mm-hmm. is every state is kind of doing it differently, but also following the examples of the sensible ones because there's no leadership at the top, uh, no clear leadership at least. And so um, my state, Indiana, has has actually done pretty well. They pretty early on, you know, they closed schools and they set, and then they issued a stay at home order, mm-hmm. which is basically stay at home. We're not like locked in, hmm. but we're not in a lockdown situation where the police will, you know, find us if we leave. But we're only supposed to leave for essentials like food. Um, if we are an essential worker and we have to go to work, um, public parks are closed. Any no gatherings of ten or more people. Um, pr- uh, pretty much all the restaurants are closed. The ones that can are doing takeout orders. Uh, most of the retail stores are closed except for the ones that sell, you know, essentials. Um, I was out Saturday. Uh, we ordered takeout food for the first time in, in weeks. And I was actually really surprised at how many people were out, mm. you know, who shouldn't be out, like at the home improvement store doing home improvement projects. Yeah. And, um, but and in, and then in Illinois and Chicago, they're they have also have a stay at home order. Their governor has been very on the ball with this. And then they had issues when the weather got nice. People were congregating. Um, there's a lake shore path that runs the entire length of the city of Chicago. And it's beautiful and it's very popular. Well, people were flocking to that. And so they were not social distancing. And that's mm-hmm. the thing everywhere is social distancing, staying, basically staying away from people, don't shake hands, don't touch anybody. And then um, this past Friday, they announced that if we are out in public, even if you're not symptomatic, you should be wearing a mask of some kind, um, which is easier said than done because you can't find them anywhere now. That is interesting. And uh, I think uh, here in Ireland, they have yet to actually uh, make an official statement in relation to that. But there are growing calls for an increase in mask wearing. Jonathan, uh, we're going to talk to you again and uh, keep track of progress on both sides of the Atlantic. And uh, thanks again for talking to us today. No problem. Thanks, Con. That's Jonathan Thomas. Uh, He, as I said, works with uh, us in the marketing team here in Black Knight. That's it for this episode, episode three. Any suggestions or uh, advice as to how we should proceed with this podcast? We're going to do it three times a week for the foreseeable future, and hopefully that future won't extend too far forward. Uh, Join us on Wednesday for the next episode. Good evening, Slán, Agus Benacht.